Hello, lovely ladies and gentlemen here on my Instagram account and in the Facebook group Free and Empowered. So today's live is a little atypical. I'm going to share three ways that my narcissistic mom actually helped me go no contact with her. Now that may seem like a pretty weird theme for a life, but there's a specific purpose why I want to talk about how I was helped to go no contact by my mom. And the reason is a little word called reframing. So what's reframing? Reframing is when you look at the same situation from another angle and then you can kind of establish, create a different meaning for that experience. This means that you can have an experience that seems pretty painful, that gets you down, that may traumatize you, but through reframing, through looking at how that experience helped you grow or helped you achieve some sort of result, result or how that experience actually became um, a way out from a bad situation that you were in, when you see that difficult situation as a portal towards your freedom or towards your growth, then all of a sudden all that pain that you went through has meaning and it doesn't just you know keep getting you down. So I want to share experiences with you that could have been just painful experiences, but through the power of reframing, I was able to extract from them courage, strength, wisdom to actually go no contact. Now, before we get started, and I also hope with, the, with this live that you will be able to reflect on your experiences and actually ask yourself if there is a way of reframing the way that you look at things that could be more beneficial. Obviously, um, when you've dealt with narcissists, you end up being gaslighted all the time and you end up with very limiting beliefs um, in, a dis in a reality distortion, right? So uh, you might actually see reality as being hopeless when it's not. And the power of reframing will allow you to see the potential in reality for your freedom and for your mental health. So um, for those of you who are interested in the Inner, Ma in Inner Mastery Lab, the card opens on April 22nd and we start on May 8th. Now, the Inner Mastery Lab is a 10-week program. Uh, there, it exists in English, it exists in Portuguese. It was created specifically for children of narcissists. It helps you understand how narcissistic abuse in childhood has shaped your pers personality to this day. And it will give you actual practical tools to to reprogram those limiting beliefs and to get back in touch with their true self, your essence, which is what narcissistic abuse deprives us of, our true self. So the card opens on April 22nd and we start on May 8th. If you're interested, just click on the link in the description of this video. If you're on YouTube or if you're on Instagram, then just click on the link in my biography and you can learn more about the Inner Mastery Lab there. Okie dokie! So the first way that my, that my mom helped me go no contact was actually by telling me a story um, that she had gone through when she was, I think, in college. My mom told me once, I remember I was a kid, she said, you know, um, I was in college one day and my teacher, who was a very optimistic person, she said, in life, you always have a choice. Even if you have a crappy choice, life will always give you choices. So you can always eventually find a way out of situations. And I got real angry, my mom said, because that's not true. And I told her, Bravo. Oh, sorry, there, there seems to be some sort of issue here. And I told her that actually, wait, hold up, guys. sorry, there's just something that happened here. In this other hold up there we go so actually my mom said hey teacher that's not right we don't always have a choice the way that you're saying life isn't that easy sometimes what life gives you is a choice between a catastrophe and a piece of shit what sort of choice is that and I remember that when my mom told me this story and she was real angry and she thought that she had shown her teacher, you know, she'd really taught her a lesson. Hey, don't you dare be so optimistic. There are no such things as good choices in life. 
I actually interpreted that situation in a completely different way. I thought, wait a second, mom. If what life gives you is the choice between a piece of shit and a catastrophe, that is still a choice. I'm not saying it's an ideal choice. Obviously, I didn't tell her this at the time, but I thought this when I was a kid. Obviously, it's not an ideal choice if you only have, you know, a piece of shit and a catastrophe at hand to choose from. But if you choose the piece of shit, it is less than a catastrophe. And if you work with what you've got, if you work with that piece of shit over time, you can actually create better opportunities for yourself. And then at the next crossroads, when you have another choice that you could make, you might have different options. Now, it might not be a piece of shit and a catastrophe. It might be a piece of shit and just something crappy. Well, you're like, oh, this is a real big piece of shit. This is just slightly crappy. I'm going to choose the slightly crappy situation. And then if you keep on working at it in a little bit more time, you will actually create further opportunities. And then your choices will be, will be between something kind of crappy and something okay. It still may not be your ideal life. It still may not be everything that you wanted, but it is a step-by-step -step process towards what you're trying to create. And if you have that choice between something slightly crappy and something okay, I'm sure as heck going to choose the okay thing. Isn't that right? And in that gradual way where you keep on taking tiny steps and you accept working with what you got, where you're at, even if it seems like the choices are kind of crappy, this is how you can find the silver lining. When, you, when all you see is the darkness, just because your options always all seem really bad, you know, and you can't... Um, understand that there's many shades of gray there and that gray is a little bit better than pitch black you can't find a way out it's like for example let's say you want to set up a business you have this dream I want to launch this amazing business I'm gonna do this great work in the world but you're poor you're depressed you're, you're at your narcissistic mother's house you're financially dependent on her if you just look at your options then and there being depressed and poor and depending on her and you ask yourself, is it possible for me to have that long-term dream of setting up a business, being that my situation is what it is right now and my options are so crappy now? You're going to come to the conclusion that there's no way out. But if you can see your life as a sequence of step-by-step -step upgrades towards what you're working um, for, then it's possible. And there's lots of, of stories like that, lots of situations like that where people who are very successful in whatever area um, they work in, they tell their personal story and they came from really abject circumstances. So the very first way that my mom helped me go no contact with her was by help having me learn the lesson that her, her university teacher was trying to teach her like a decade before, two decades before, that she wasn't able to absorb. Because I absorbed that lesson when I went no contact with her and I had no idea what my future would be like. I had no idea how it would be possible to have a future without, you know, having contact with my mom. I thought that was impossible. I would never be able to do it, right? It seemed so impossible, but I had internalized the idea that I wasn't going to have it all from the get-go. I wasn't going to go no contact and be mentally healthy and achieve all my dreams. I knew it was going to take years, and that's what it took, to kind of um, start reprogramming all that inner crap that was left over from the narcissistic abuse. But it was possible. And just the fact that it was possible gave me the courage to take such a huge step. And that's the first way that my mom helped me go no contact with her by teaching me that no matter how dire your situation is, there is always a way out. Now, the second way that my mom, now you can all see that this wasn't actually what my mom taught me. This was my ability to observe this in, in, her, in her story. But, you know, it was, it was something that was handed to me indirectly uh, through my mom. Now, the second way that my mom ended up helping me go no contact is that she would always say, since I was a kid, she'd be like, it doesn't really matter if you have blood ties with somebody. Family aren't the people that you have blood ties, ties with. Family are the people that you choose to be by your side. And she used to tell me this since I was a little girl. And she told us this because my mom actually went no contact with our family. 
I'm Brazilian, but we moved to the United States when I was six. And, and over time, my mom actually cut ties with everybody in Brazil. And I spent like almost 20 years without having contact with my family. And the way that she would justify this is, you know, family are the people that you choose to have by your side. Now, the way that I interpreted this as a child was, mm, okay, mom, so you're giving me permission to choose my own family when I'm older. And when I have the strength and means to do that, that's exactly what I'll do. I think, even though I felt an astronomic quantity of guilt when I went no contact, and I was absolutely terrified, and I mean, if my mom called me, I would literally, like, my heart would race and I couldn't breathe, and it was terrifying. It was psychological terrorism to have my mom in my life. Even, even though this was true, I had long before internalized that that was my right. That I had the right to choose my own family. And so that became my inner truth. And I spent the next few years after going no contact, handpicking, really loving people who respected me, who I could be myself around to be part of my family. And now I consider them and my sisters, because I do have contact with my sisters and I'm very lucky, very blessed. Um, those are my family members. And who gave me that permission? My mom gave me that permission without even realizing it. And then I give myself that permission, right? And the third way, the third way that my narcissistic mom helped me go no contact with her is by going no contact with my family in Brazil. Now, I know this sounds kind of weird, but um, when I talk to clients, they have many issues when it comes to reducing contact or going no contact. And many of these issues, they, they might involve um, emotional dependency or financial dependency. And also, they might involve the fact that there are other people in the family that they don't want to go no contact with. So, like, imagine that you have a narcissistic mother or father, but you have, like, a special needs brother that lives with them. Or a sister who's always depressed and is suicidal. And you know that if you go no contact with them, they're going to make it hard for you to get close to your sister or to your brother. And that's super painful. So those things that tie us to the narcissist, make it all that much harder to break free. And the thing about my life and my mom in particular is that I had a very unstable life. I, I didn't go to school after a while. We started homeschooling, but we didn't really do it. We moved every year. There were lots of stepfathers. We were always, you know, things were always changing. Things were so unstable. What, what I'm trying to, to express here is that in all of this stability, there was nothing that my mom could give me that would make it appealing for me to stay. I didn't have a family anymore because she went no contact with everybody. I didn't have friends or anything like that at that time. We moved every year. Like, I wasn't able to take roots anywhere, do anything with that, you know. Um, I, I wasn't going to lose anybody because I'd already lost everybody almost 20 years before. Uh, my mom didn't have money, so she wasn't able to, to make me cling to her because of the financial benefits I would get. On the contrary, I started working when I was 16 and I would give money to the household. I would, you know, um, I would try to be as independent as I could as a teenager. So because of the absolute instability and lack of, of nutrition in my family life, there was nothing to leave behind other than my mom. My sisters already weren't talking to her. You know what I mean? And, it, and I realized many years later that this, this, this vast nothingness that our family life was that used to make me so sad. I remember in my early 20s, I felt so envious of people that had a family life. I would look at other people my age and they had experiences like, oh yeah, I spent a semester in Paris studying French because my dad paid for it. And Nobody paid for anything for me, you know. I went to college and bought my house and did everything by myself with my money. Never got it from mom from that, from that. But I was envious. I really wanted that support. The thing that caused me the greatest envy in my life was people who had social support. People who had friends and family. But I realized over time that in my situation, because my family was toxic, it was wonderful that there was nothing they could give me. Isn't it interesting how with time we can reframe, th reframe things? And the same thing that was very painful for me actually became my ticket out. 
So yeah, that's the third way that my mom helped me go no contact um, with her. It was, there was nothing there for me to leave behind. There was nothing there. There was nothing there. So I just went no contact. You know what I mean? Well, guys, um, so these are the three ways that I want that my mom actually helped me go no contact with her. The purpose of this live, like I said, was to help everybody kind of take a look at their situation and see in which ways it's possible to reframe that pain, reframe that vast nothingness, reframe those weird lessons that they try to put into us. Because if you are the master of your perception of your own life, of your interpretation of what is and isn't possible for you, then you can change what they did. You know what I mean? And you don't have to feel victim to them for the rest of your life. Like, any, anyone who follows my channel knows I'm, I'm never going to tell you that this process is easy. It's not easy to go no contact. It's not easy to reprogram all of the crap that's left over. Your nervous system that can't calm down ever. You know what I mean? All of this is painful. None of this is easy. But it's liberating as heck. And if you can find in all of that blackness, ways, even if they're kind of like weird ways that could possibly bring you some light or take you out of that labyrinth, that labyrinth without an exit, you know what I mean? Then do it. So what I want to ask you is, did you have any insights listening to my story? Was there anything that was particularly relevant to you? What came to you and what are you going to take away from this? What are you going to take with you? So let me know in the comments below. I love reading your feedback. I can't answer everybody because there's just, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a huge volume of messages that I get. But I love reading your feedback. I love seeing how this work is or is not impacting you. And it really helps me become a better professional as well when I can see how all of this is impacting you. If you have suggestions for lives or you want me to approach any particular topic, please let me know in the comments below as well. I would be happy to provide you content that is aligned with what you're looking for. Okay, people, thank you so much. Um, just one more message again. If you're interested in the Inner Mastery Lab, then the car opens on April 22nd and we start on May 8th. And you can find out more about the Inner Mastery Lab by clicking on the link in the description on YouTube or by clicking on the link in my biography uh, here on Instagram. You can also contact via WhatsApp. It's plus five five because I'm in Brazil. So plus five five twenty one nine 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 eight seven seven zero three two. 9998770332 so 5521999877032 there we go <laughs> you can contact us through there there as well um so let's see i would love to see you analyzing the husband of a good girl mm, you mean like a narcissistic husband with a goody two shoes who can't say no to anybody is that what you mean like what those dynamics in a toxic relationship would be like? Is that what you're saying? Ah, with this psychologist you collaborate with sometimes. You mean in Portuguese, Katia, Katia Rodrigues. She's wonderful. She's wonderful. Yeah, there we go. Ah, you're watching this stuff in Portuguese. That's a good idea. I would love to see you analyze. No, no, it's not Katia Rodrigues. That's not the one that you're talking about. I'm confused. Who are you talking about? Let's see. Oh, I got it, I got it. You want me to analyze the husband in the movie Good Girl? You want us to analyze that? Is that what you're talking about? All right, got it. Got it, got it, got it. Now I understood. Okie dokie, that's a good suggestion. If you guys have any more suggestions, let me know. Send them inbox. Um, they always help us out. Thank you very much, Conscious Organizing. Okie dokie. So guys, thank you so much for your presence. I love it when you guys are here, when you can participate. And uh, that's it. See you next time.